Okay, so um, now do we go to interactive jobs? Yeah, let's do. So we are now we are putting the sauna. Like now we're hitting the sauna. Now we're <laughs> like getting somewhere. So so the like this is the first. So now we're actually starting to do something in uh, the cluster. So so far we just like unpacked our stuff. We have our stuff stored somewhere in the work directory. We have put stuff in the cupboards. We have uh, organized, like, we, we are ready to stay at this place. But now we actually want to do something there. So so now we have connected there. We have found some uh, firewood applications. We have found something that we, we need for our stuff. We, we have put our belongings uh, to the proper places, and now we want to run something. <laughs> yeah. So, I guess first we need to talk about what Slurm is. So, how would you describe that, and why is it the most important concept here? Yeah. So, so basically, what we when on day one we describe the cluster as like it's a collection of nodes and the login node, and there's uh, hundreds of people using the same system at the same time. So if you think about like you have a computer at your home and you want hundreds of people working on the same computer, that wouldn't really work because there's only one keyboard and stuff like that. Uh, and the Slurm uh, like helps this kind of a situation. So basically the Slurm manages all of the different tasks that are uh, required from it. And it, it allocates resources for these tasks or these jobs, mm -hmm. as they are called, and they are run then on the compute nodes. So basically, the Slurm is like a like a very good uh, like a what's it called like in the restaurant like server like yeah. um, arranges yeah yeah host or mater d or something like that yeah 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 yeah, yeah mater d uh, who arranges like tables for your group uh, like you you come with a you have a job that requires certain resources, certain placement on a table or something like they requ they have certain requirements for their night uh, in the restaurant and and the this very good host manages to organize everybody at the proper places so that the restaurant is as full as possible constantly and this is basically what the slurm does it's a queue manager that basically manages like all of our uh, so, uh, jobs that we submit, they end up to this queue, and and uh, the queue uh, manager will then arrange uh, resources for these jobs. Right. So, then, what are the? So, what's our interface to this? Like, what's the part that we need to know when trying to run something? Yeah, like like uh, like in the list. Uh, that we currently have visible here, there's very good like examples of stuff we need to know. So uh, the host, in order to get like uh, what you, the, the current uh, correct uh, uh, seating, the host needs to know how many party people are in the party and how long they are going to be dining there. So these would be they represent like how many CPUs mm -hmm. your job needs, how much memory does your job need. Uh, how long is the job going to be running? And yeah. then the job, uh, the uh, like, uh, uh, then the uh, host knows that okay, like this table will be reserved from this time onwards. But in the meantime, you can sit here because your dining time is short enough that mm -hmm. you can you can finish up before yeah. the next next people arrive. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. so then, once you, what you do usually you use these. Uh, S interactive, S run, or S batch commands to uh, ask for these allocations, mm -hmm. and then you are giving a number uh, that that basically tells how what what is your uh, ID, like what is your reservation number, and then you are given the uh, the correct seating. And after after that, you can ask the host, like, am I current currently? What what is my situation? Am I allowed to run what is what is happening mm -hmm. and then afterwards well you get yeah. you can look at what happened uh like how long did the actual job runtime take and st stuff like that afterwards yeah. 
So what happens if you really have no idea what these parameters are? Yeah, so 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 the first things uh first thing is that like you can uh first uh try just running something in the queue without setting these parameters at all. So basically, if you have something for example here in the example, uh do you Richard want to try and and run this example for example? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So let's Triton. see. Here I am. So I am on Triton. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So maybe I should make sure both are visible. Yes, that would be good. So the example is a very simple Python yes. script. It just prints, well, it's running this command in Python. Mm. So we want to run so, this. Yeah, and the, and the easiest way to like test how it would run in the queue is to just add a s run at the start. So, so what like the s run this? means, yes, like, like that. What the s run means is that it basically at that point uh, Slurm like understands that okay, this wants this 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 will be run in the queue, and whatever comes afterwards is what will be run. So uh, it will uh, like like it says here, it will put the uh, task into the queue and it's waiting for resources. <clears throat> and then once the resources are available, it will run the command. So in this case, because we are asking to, to print what is the name of the machine, it will uh, right now, when you, we see that it's been allocated resources, it will say that it ran on this CSL46 uh, machine. So it ran on a separate system. So it was allocated the resources and then it got the resources and it ran. It ran with the, our default resources that are like 500 megabytes of memory and uh, hour of runtime. But uh, like in the example in the web page, you can specify these uh, resources yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, like you can specify these. So let's say we want to add, uh, uh, let's say, yeah, 100 megabytes. And mm -hmm. let's say, because it, it's very fast, let's say 10 minutes of runtime okay. if you want to put. So is this 10 minutes or 10 hours? Well, it's hard to tell. So I would rather put two zeros at the front so that yeah. you, you know what, what it is. So that way it's like a universal clock. You. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. it's, it's very hard to tell. And you can see that in the memory, there's like 100 and capital M. So you can put also gigabytes there with a G, but it's, uh, uh, it's megabytes. You want to look at Slurm Q? Yeah, we can we can look at the Slurm queue. At the, uh, well, it stopped. Well, well, we can do the monitoring later on. We, we yeah. you can look at what ha what's happening in the queue uh, with this uh, this Slurm queue and Slurm. Mm. Well, uh, these commands, but but at this point, it's not. Uh, we we'll talk about monitoring in detail a bit later on. So it's not currently that important. But uh, that will tell you what is the uh, queue status. Uh, that is Alto specific, I think. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, other sites, uh, there's a different command. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. But okay, so there was good questions uh, there in the HackMD of how do you know uh, the resources of your job? And I, I usually say it like, like if you have a computer, uh, like let's say a laptop, uh, and it's something and it takes like let's 15 minutes to run on your, on your laptop well you might expect it takes 15 minutes to run on the cluster as well right right it's only natural that they are for both computers it should work pretty much the same uh and that's usually the case it depends but but usually i would guess something that is similar to well how it used to run uh, if you're unsure and and anyways you should put some leeway there so so put maybe uh maybe like a of the order of the set like the job runtime so let's say your job takes hour i would put maybe two hours mm -hmm. so that it has leeway to go above the hour like starting on your much. computer like yeah your computer yeah, but might it, it, have 16 gigabytes of memory so mm, start with that yeah. Yeah, same with the memory. Like, put put something like your computer must have sixty gigabytes of memory, and the program runs. 
so you know that okay maybe i'll put 16 gigabytes we'll talk about how you can monitor these after the fact like how do you can how, how can you see what is the uh, uh how, how much it actually used after the after the and program has run but but first you you need to give it some ballpark if you aim too low that the job is killed so that happens when your allocations are like too low then uh, you know that okay i will need to put higher and usually it's this kind of like you first need to get like a feel for your program uh so that you you then can uh, like set more be or better uh, limits that uh that are more clear uh, yeah. like, or like similar okay um, so what's next yeah yeah let's let's talk about uh so so this job like over here when we run something we run it uh on on the login node we run this s run something and then it run on the node but let's say we want to like we want to test something out and we don't want to like constantly run the s run and wait in the queue we just want to like have have some uh we just want to work uh in like on a compute node for a while like for example there mm -hmm. was questions there that or let's say i want to like uh yeah i want to test my code but i don't want to like mess up other people's stuff on the login node that is usually a good idea to, <laughs> uh, yeah. to think about so what you can do is you can set up this interactive job so the interactive job basically like it allocates you a job and it, it takes an SSH connection there, so you can uh, you you basically get the terminal in that um, node. So does this work here, outside of Alto? I think that should work. Uh, we also in Alto we have this uh, S interactive command that basically mm -hmm. you can just use to to uh, like similarly similarly to SRUN, you can run S interactive and the requirements and you will get a terminal. So now you see that Richard, when, when the job was queued uh, and was allocated, he's now, uh, you can see on the left side of his command line, it says that he's running on a compute node. So basically he's running now a, like an interactive terminal in a compute node. Mm -hmm. uh, and there he can run well what he wants uh, without bothering other people in the login node. Yeah. So so this is a well fairly simple way of getting like interactive resources. Do I need to exit from here? Uh, yes. Like if you if you want to once you have uh, well finished doing your work like you don't want to uh, be there anymore you can just uh, exit or log out. And and it will you it will say mm -hmm. to you that the does it well, say to you? Hmm. Maybe log out. Try log out. But the shell did end. Hmm. Well, hmm. What the, this is yeah. Maybe maybe the control D control D is the usual uh, thing that I use. Uh, it might be that the. Oh. Could it be it's because this is not S interactive? Well, anyway. Try log out. Try log out. What happened? I will lose the shell. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so can you can you check? Uh, now I have to get this oh, locking okay. thing set up again. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you so, check Slurm Q? Is it still running? No. Okay. No. So it, mm. it it stopped. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So what does it this Slurm Q do? This Slurm Q, uh, so this, this is shorthand for this SQ command that is like a bit more, uh, oh. well, it, it gives uh, information of what is happening in the queue. Uh, the Slurm Q will tell what is the status of your jobs. We'll be talking about these once we more when we get to the non-interactive jobs. So the non-interactive mm -hmm. jobs are jobs where you're not running something interactively. But right. uh, so maybe we should have a quick, quick like uh, quick exercise of people trying to run, for example, the Python example. OK, um, let's see. Like, let's say like five minutes or something, if people can. Mm. Uh, ah, you mean what we just did? Yeah, yeah, to, to see if so people can run the, themselves. Which part? Um, 
well, let's say the, the uh, first... Esron part. Yeah. Yeah, if, yeah. Because that is like that is the first step you're taking towards like running stuff in the queue. So so try running stuff in the queue and see if it works. Mm -hmm. Like let's say five minutes on yeah. this. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you have any problems, then ask. Uh, we'll respond to the HackMD at the same time. Okay. So, we're back. Hopefully you've been able to do that. So there's a lot of messages I see yeah. about different commands and partitions being different. Like, mm. in some computers it says use interactive, not srun for interactive. In Alto you can also use sinteractive. Um, there was a comment way above about is grun the same as srun? or you need to use a different partition for interactive. And it's kind of a mess, isn't it? Yeah, I'd say that the, the G run most likely, like you're not working probably with a Slurm system. So all of the clusters in the world, they have some sort of a, like a queue manager. Uh, like there are many of these like PBS, Slurm, uh, Cray has their own. I, I can't now remember all of them, <laughs> but, uh, but Slurm is the, the most popular, uh, partly because it's free, but uh but it's also very good but uh so so uh can't sell you say if that's uh, uh that's same but uh but in yeah on other sites the interactive queue might not exist so so you might need to take the p flag out and that that well we can we will go into detail what are those different flags in, uh mm -hmm. in when we go to the serial jobs yeah yeah uh, but yeah. There's a interesting question here. If both Triton and my computer runs a program in the same one hour, what's the point of using Triton to run the program? I was thinking it should make it faster somehow. Yeah, that, that's that's a, actually a very good like philosophical question or like question like why why uh, would you use it? So so this is like like the idea behind a cluster is that you can uh, like something that would take your laptop let's say a full night's work of like just wearing in the background like of your apartment and like making you sleep less uh, less well uh, something like that can be put into a computer cluster and you can run it there and well you sleep well uh, and uh, at the morning you can uh, come back to the resources uh, uh, or come back to the results and, and see them uh, or you can even like run the same analysis let's say for with multiple parameters uh, like separately mm -hmm. I'll run multiple of these jobs uh, so that you will uh, get suddenly you will get benefits like you can run multiple of them at the same time or you can either if your program supports it you can use the multiple uh, mm -hmm. uh, CPUs so when we are talking about what is like improvement or making something faster it doesn't necessarily we are not talking about like you waiting, looking at the computer. Like we are talking about what makes it faster for you to like get to the end goal. Like mm -hmm. this is uh, what the X Y kind of a problem. So so the end goal is that you get. Let's say you need to do thousand uh, simulations, and if you wait thousand times the time uh, on front of your laptop, you might not even like you can't join a Zoom call because your laptop is so loud that you like annoy mm -hmm. other people there. So, or you, you need to stop the simulation while your laptop is doing the calculations or stop like uh, or while you're doing a Zoom call. So the idea is that you can offload a lot of this work to the cluster systems where you can run, let's say, multiple of these simulations at the same time. And they, there's basically like an army of little uh, work, work people who who like generate the results for you once you tell them what you want to be done. So it's like offloading the the computation somewhere else, and and that will reduce the overall runtime. Of course, some programs they are faster. Of course, if you run multiple CPUs and stuff like that, uh, they can also be faster, like in real time. But in many cases, the situation is that what is like the faster for the whole project, mm -hmm. like, and that is like something that you need to think like. Like, can you, like, if I 
if I would have 100 laptops, would I get this <laughs> done faster? Because yeah. I would, like, I could put one simulation running on each of these laptops. Yeah. And of course, you don't want 100 laptops in your home. Like, that's insane. But like, it's and completely. You couldn't even use them. Like, yeah, like who's who's walking. going to like like running the commands on every laptop? That's like so much work. Like it it would become really laborious. But that is completely trivial to do in cluster. Like you just like we talk tomorrow about these array jobs, and you can immediately like run a hundred simulations simultaneously. And it's yeah. like it's not a biggie like in in a cluster environment. And the pro the thing is that like uh, like speed up and what is faster, it's not necessarily you shouldn't think about like clock time you mm -hmm. shouldn't you should think about your work time like yeah. that is the ma most important thing like mm -hmm. you want to be because uh, you can say if you really yeah. have only one program to run for one hour there's no point in the cluster mm. like but like i i here. usually think about it like like i don't want to sit in front of like a terminal window looking at the numbers were in past like like when the simulation is going on and just waiting there, uh, yeah. fiddling my thumbs and waiting for the results to appear. I want it to be like it's gone. It's running somewhere else. I can do other stuff in the meantime. I can read literature. I can improve some other stuff. And and then once I come back, by magic almost the the results are there to be uh, like ripe ripe for the picking. Yeah. So th that so, is the, the real power of the cluster system. Yeah. So what should we do now? Um, so, so, yeah, so, so, so at, the, at this point, I think we should, uh, like we are getting close to the four o'clock, we can now, uh, well, demonstrate what we will be starting in the next, uh, at the start of the next day, because this, like, like what we just talked about, that is um, like basically the next step. Like that is that that change of uh, frame of perspective from I'm running this stuff on my laptop. What am I am I running it in the cluster with the sron command? That is basically now you're running the same thing there, but you're not getting any benefit, right? Like you're running the same stuff in a command line somewhere else, and you're not seeing any benefit. Mm -hmm. But the real benefit is come comes when you disconnect yourself and your tel terminal from the simulation, and you run it somewhere in the background, and you don't have to think about it anymore until it's finished. And this is where we get to the non-interactive working flow, and this is what basically everybody uses in cluster environments. Yeah. Should we do some more of these interactive exercises down at the bottom, or should we go on? Mm, we might want to do, like, there was, yeah, let's do a few of these, like, before we run the uh, uh, serial job example. So there was good questions there, like, what happens if the job runs out of memory or if it runs out of time? And there mm. are these uh, examples here, uh, like, if you have downloaded, like, if you haven't yet cloned this uh, HPC examples repository, uh, you can do it now into your work directory or to your home directory. Uh, doesn't really matter. You can try the work directory because that's where you will be running in the future. So that's a better place to store it. But if you clone the repository in there, there's this memory hog script that basically just allocates bigger and bigger uh, amounts of memory. And Try Should running I be doing it. this. Let's yeah, let's do it interactively. Okay. That's a good idea. Okay. So I'm removing so, my existing yeah. examples. Yeah. You I don't will... need to do this. Yeah. I hope there is nothing important in there. And now I run git clone to get it. Um Okay, uh, and now I am in HPC examples. So, hmm. yeah, let's, uh, if you run this memory hog, hog script. Mm -hmm. So what happens like, if I run it now? Yeah, if you run it now, it, it runs on the login node. So basically you will use the resources uh, on the login node. So to 
try running it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, does it say at the top? Does it say where it's running? Mm, probably not. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, so you can see that it tries to allocate, and it, it, there's no limit uh, on the login node. So many users sometimes fill the node with uh, jobs, and we have to kill them because. Like we haven't put memory limit on the login node, but uh, you're not supposed to run heavy memory used jobs there. But let's yeah. say we want to run it in the queue. So, so the exercise uh, B. Okay. So we use S run 500 megabytes of memory. Mm. Python slur memory hog and 50 megabytes. Yeah. So we're waiting. Okay, so it worked. Yeah. So you Yep. Yep. So that's uh, as simple as that. Can you run slurm history now? So this is uh, there's another command for hmm. other sites. Um, hmm. I think it's the last one over there. So we'll talk about monitoring uh, a bit later on. But you can well okay. It, it didn't to register the memory yeah. usage yet. But let's try running the the, uh, Actually, the C step. Uh, C. So increase yeah, the so, amount of memory. So yeah, let's put something that is bigger than the 500 megabytes. Like so five like, gigabytes? Yeah, something like that. OK. Mm -hmm. and the idea here is to demonstrate uh, what, what will happen if you run out of memory in the job. And this slurm history command will go into more detail next week. Yes. OK, I've got resources. Or, or, or tomorrow, not or, next week. Oh, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you can see that okay. we got out of memory error here. So we are. Yeah. Uh, and interestingly, didn't even print any output, which I'm. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's because uh, like if you run the Python without unbuffer output, it might not work. So yeah. Python dash u, it's, mm. I think it's because of that. Okay. Like it. Well, I'll let this go but, then. I'll add that. Okay. But yeah, you can see that like if it runs out of memory. Mm. Okay, now we get some. Memory. There we go. Yeah. So at about two gigabytes, the job was killed. Two. So there's a bit of a leeway in the in the memory that you are al allowed to use unless some other task needs that memory, in which case your job is killed automatically. Uh, yeah. So this, this is what happens when the... Uh, so maybe I think we should show the S interactive or... Hmm. So I see a comment in HackMD about in Helsinki using the interactive command. So when you start these things like S run... Uh, well, how about I demonstrate this other command we have, s interactive. So this is probably similar to the Helsinki s or interactive command. So we run it. We could give the same slurm options for memory and time and stuff like that. Um, the main reason people use this is that they want graphical applications to work. Mm. But so once this starts, we get a new shell. So this shell is on the other computer. And my shell tries to start something automatically, so we see a big mess there. Let's ignore that. But now let's say I run the Python thing. Uh, well, if I run anything here, hmm. Hmm. So it runs and then it stops. But notice I'm still on the 
node I requested. So I have to exit this shell myself. So there's two ways of doing these interactive things. One is by requesting a session, and then you can do multiple things. And then you have to remember to close the session yourself, or else it'll keep allocating the resources and, well, eventually time out and um, that's not good. The other option is what we did with the S run like this, where the command is directly on the S run line. And here we wrap the command in S run. So S run allocates resources, runs exactly one command, and then exits right away. And this is a very important fundamental distinction. And also, I guess we see it later on too. So when we do the asynchronous serial jobs, you give it a command, it runs it, and then it frees the resources immediately. Let's see. Mm -hmm. That shell got crazy. OK, um, let's see. Maybe we can, what should we do now? Um, yeah, like I want to clarify uh, a few things in, in like in the HackMD that are very good questions. So, so like there's questions related to like, why are we suddenly using this, uh, this cues? Like uh, mm -hmm. why, why is it important? And the important thing is that we have a lot of resources and, and those resources need to be shared among multiple users. And these queue systems are meant for like making certain that everybody gets what they need. Like if we just put like, let's say machines that, and we say that go out there, uh, people go there, every server, some servers will be completely empty and some servers will be completely full and nothing works there because there's too much used there. So, so the queue system, it balances the load so that everybody gets what they need and 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 what they ask for and that way uh like the well this system is efficient so the efficiency is something like 90 percent in our clusters so so like uh that like like system is completely filled and that is uh important because that's basically like we don't waste servers we don't waste money <laughs> like everybody gets what they need and we still got like uh uh, uh well, we don't just like put put stuff there and uh, it goes to waste and money goes to waste. Like it's important to put stuff, uh, do stuff eff effectively and in scale. When you're doing stuff in scale, you need to be able to create these queue systems so that and people to abide by the queue system so that people get what they need. There's also a good question there that like if I don't run with S run, uh, uh, the stuff runs much faster on the login mm. node. And why is that? And the reason for there is that like if you just run S run, you are asking for one CPU, you're asking for some memory and some time. And in the login node, if you run stuff there uh, without uh, like, you're basically taking stuff from the other users and then um, uh, using the C all CPUs probably on the machine or your code is might be using. So, so that's why it's really important to like set your job so that you the job utilizes the resources it's been given and knows how to utilize it so when you run it the simulation on a node uh, we'll talk about parallel simulations tomorrow but but when you ask for resources it might be that the job is is running on one cpu or it might be that it starts multiple uh workers and it tries to all of them are forced into one cpu so either way it will run slower so uh it's important to know, like, know what your program is doing and ask for the correct resources for the program. Uh, and, and that way it should, it should run the same speed once you get the correct resources. If you ask for, let's say, a similar node as the login node. Yes, so any other really important questions here? Um... I see we've detected that the Helsinki cluster is not okay. failing. Yeah. So don't don't Actually, don't mess up there yeah, because it might affect then other jobs if the memory killer isn't engaging properly. So don't don't uh, run run the memory so, like to become a memory stuff in 
Can you yeah. try running the CC here? So S run the command, but then tell it to sleep for two minutes. And it might be that it runs. So it allocates the memory and then, okay. So it used to be in Triton, there was a process that ran every 60 seconds and checked is a job using too much memory and then killed it. So when this happened, you can go over your memory limit until the next 60 second interval happened and then you would get killed. So that could be what the problem is here. And that's why the sleep option was added. Um, so it won't end until it has time to do this. So interestingly, also when you run the slurm history command, which I showed before, you see, mm, let's see, we'll go over this more tomorrow, but this one M here is what the actual memory usage was. So it, you notice it says one megabyte. This is just wrong. And that's because still this only measures it every 60 seconds and not every, not instantly, even though Triton kills it instantly. So it can be a bit tricky to like keep these yeah. together. Yeah, the memory, memory key legacy are only engaged when like, when the, well, they run on a, on a, like a set period, but, and then they yeah. like set intervals and it, if the memory is running out, then they will kill the jobs that are going above the limits. Yeah. Uh, but, and, but, so, yeah. And interestingly, this is the kind of thing we talk about in our Triton admin meetings all the time. So there's some really small things that seems like an obvious thing to do, but then either it doesn't quite work or there's some other trade off. And, well, hmm. yeah. But, yeah, so, so, but, so, um, just to, to like like yeah let let's for tomorrow like what what you should gather from this s interactive thing is like now we got our first glimpse of the queue system and this is like the queue system is really what powers the cluster so everything mm -hmm. we said before is like needed for the cluster to work you need storage you need uh login nodes you need stuff but like basically you're currently seeing uh like uh, the veil being opened, like you're, you're, you're at the theater, the veil is being mm -hmm. opened, but the show is about to start. And the show starts tomorrow when we go into non-interactive usage. Because this is like, like you're still opening a terminal somewhere, you're running commands interactively. And that is not the point, the main point of the cluster. The main point of the cluster is that you tell somebody else to do stuff for you. And that somebody mm -hmm. else is the queue manager. You tell like the, like you want stuff to be done and you want it to be done tomorrow and and you mm -hmm. go to sleep and you come back tomorrow and then it stuff is done and that's how the queue works you run stuff non-interactively and you only use the command line and the data copying and stuff like that to to like uh, then uh, like give the instructions and read the output from there mm -hmm. so so these is interactive this is just the first glimpse of the queue manager so you you can run stuff interactively you can give it some limits like memory limit time limit we'll talk about other limits tomorrow but basically mm -hmm. the idea here is that tomorrow we'll have a full day of running non-interactive jobs and that is the the, the like 99 percent of our jobs are run that way and and like the most powerful users are those who have mm -hmm. the most like basically uh, the biggest pool of workers working for them, then they're basically CEOs of like <laughs> <laughs> jobs instead yeah. of like they they they're managing the jobs, they're managing the the workers. They are not doing the work themselves. So so basically, that is the non-interactive yeah. idea and yeah. that we'll we'll be focusing tomorrow. Yeah, um, and this is why the shell scripting is so important and we started with that because if you can't make your things run automatically you can't use 6000 processors at once or you know for the new CSE Lumi computers tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of processors at once